I'm gonna reach for a shaky head in conditions where I'm throwing to a spot specific place in more than five foot of water. I really do like a wacky rig or a Nico style rig, but I like to do that when I'm really fishing shallow objects that I see up there, you know, on the bank. When I'm getting out there and deeper in five foot of water, I like to reach for a shaky head. That's just a standard go-to presentation that's been catching fish for years. And I think people have really let other uh, finesse techniques overshadow it. When I throw a shaky head, I'm pretty much gonna throw one worm on it in two colors. I like to keep it standard and easy. I'm gonna throw a Berkeley bottom hopper in green pumpkin or black. And this is a spot remover head. That's not a sponsor of mine. That is just something that I've you know fished with for a really long time. I like the stand-up feature of it. That worm really stands up. It attracts fish to it. I'm going to throw a 3 16 ounce you know, when I'm fishing that five to 10 foot range or if I need to skip it. If I'm fishing 10 foot or deeper, I'll go to a quarter ounce, maybe on a windy day, even go up to a five sixteenths. You wanna add a little bit of action to it. That worm's standing up out there. So I like to get just a little bit of a slack line, bounce my rod six, seven, eight times, and then I'm gonna tighten up my slack and drag it just a little bit. And then I'll start that same process over again. Just give it a little bit of action and then pull it. A lot of times when you go to pull it and you get that slack out of your line, you'll feel that fish on the other end of it, or as soon as you get done shaking it, you'll feel him thump it. We got us a gravel bank right here and we had a little log that was sticking straight up. It's a piece of cover, something for those fish to set up on. As you can see there, Berkeley bottom hopper. We got a nice little pre-spawn female. She's full of eggs. She's ready to get up here and do her thing. You know, clear water, post frontal, high bluebird skies conditions can be really tough for catching bass. On high bluebird sky days, when the sun's really bright and that clear water, those fish are gonna to wanna to protect their eyes. They're gonna to wanna to try to hide somewhere. A dock is a great place to look for them. You have a lot of shade under the walkways and the best way to attack them is with a shaky head. I love throwing about a 3 16 ounce shaky head that's big enough that I can skip it, um, have a little bit of weight to cast it, but still light enough that it wants to skip and slide it up under there. And most of the time those fish are gonna be around the bottom of the dock poles. They like to get right on the bottom and get next to it and be in that shade. So you can kind of see where your bite should come from. Slide that shaky head under there and uh, you know see if you can't pull those fish out from under it. You know that's the beauty of the pre-spawn time is you get a mixture of male and females up here. It's just a little male. He's getting ready you know to move up and do his spawning thing. But that very easily could have been a four pound female up there by that dock pole. One thing to really note is understanding the bottom composition that you're looking for when fish are pulling up to spawn. In our case, that's gonna be the gravel. When you have a dock or a log or anything that's washed up, that's something extra. That's, that's a irregularity for those fish to set up on. That's something to be really key that you need to look for. Um, that fish came off the second dock pole out. I know about how deep that is. Then I can transition into looking for cover down the bank that's in that certain depth that's gonna allow those fish to set up around. You know, in a dock skipping setup, I'm gonna like a seven foot medium action rod. You wanna rod with a little bit of tip, but enough backbone to load up and send that bait under the dock, but have enough power to get the fish out. I really like a braid because of the ease of flow off of the reel. You don't want your line to be fighting you as you're trying to skip it under there. Braid is really limp, but it's really, it's really strong. It doesn't have any stretch. And so that line's gonna fall right off the reel, slide under there, and then you pick up on it and you have a lot of sensitivity without that stretch. That little bit of fluorocarbon is gonna give you the invisibility that you're looking for and the little bit of give you need when you set the hook. The braid's gonna take out the rest of that slack and do the rest of the job for you. You know, and this happens to be a Berkley X5 braid. I like eight pound test. That seems really light, but that braid is super strong, super abrasion resistant. So you don't have to have a very high count braid. Your main line is gonna be somewhere between eight and 12 pound test Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon. If you're really skipping into the heart of the docks, I like the 12 pound test a little bit more. If the fish are around the outside or the conditions are really, really clear, then you may have to step down to the eight to get those extra bites. To skip the bait, I really like to do a underhanded rod up and out um, cast. So I'm gonna start down low but I'm gonna end with my rod up and point it in the direction I want that bait to go. It's gonna allow my line to freely float off of it, but by holding my rod up, my line's not dragging in the water. It's gonna give it really free flow. 
you know, this is gonna be a situation where we're really trying to target a specific thing, but we have a little bit of wind and a little bit of current out here. So let's say, you know, I feel like this is a dock where I could run into multiple fish where I've gotten a bite and uh, I don't wanna just blow right by my cover. That's when I'm gonna really utilize my spot lock. I wanna fish into the wind that keeps me from going by my objects too quickly. And then I can spot lock, the boat's not gonna to try to twist around on me. It'll stay in a certain position, hold me where I wanna be. I can fix my bait, let the fish go, make multiple angle casts and my Minn Kota is gonna do my work for me. It'll hold me right where I wanna stay at. And then when I get done, simply touch the pedal, we move on down the bank. You know, so that's not a giant, but on really tough days, I wanna come out here and get bites just like everybody else. And throwing a shaky head and shade under docks is a great way to do that.